Hey fellow gardeners, Dawn here from Seasonal Designs. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to turn this into this. We are going to be working on this project in my basement and I want to walk through why I'm working on it down here and then I'm going to walk through supplies. So the reason I have it down here is because I needed a place where I could hang this at a level where it was easy for me to reach the top, the undersides, as well as the sides here. And this provided really easy access for me. And the other thing is, is I wanted it in a location where I didn't have to move it. So this was a pretty good location for me to do that. Now I wanna walk through the supplies that you need. You are obviously going to need to start with some sort of frame for your work. I chose a trellis that I purchased that was long and narrow. And then I added some chicken wire to it. I painted the frame a nice dark brown, which is the same color as my framing of where this is going to be hanging. And then my husband put some eye hooks on here and a hook with some string and he was able to string this up for me so I would be able to work on this. The other thing you're gonna need is probably a stepping stool so that when you need to get up here and look at the top, you have a little stool to safely get up and down. And then I found that I needed a scissors, a wire cutters, and a needle nose pliers because when you're up here and you're weaving your stems through, it got difficult once this got full and I was able to go in and pull up the little um, pieces of floral material that I was trying to pull through. Zip ties, and this would be a four inch zip tie. I bought a hundred pack and you'll be needing some of these. And then of course I needed some string as well as the eye hooks and little clips that I've used to hang this. Now, the other thing that you're going to need is obviously the foliage. I decided to use something faux for my arrangement because this is arrangement I am going to be using on and off for the next several years. So let me introduce you to some of the materials that we'll be using. This is a table full of some of the greens that I'm going to be using. I have concentrated on getting different foliage kind of textures as well as colors, different sorts of ferns that I'll be using, some faux eucalyptus, um, some things that are going to be pieces that are going to hang a little bit more, maybe from underneath, as well as things that are going to kind of flop maybe over the edges. And all of these on wire are wonderful because you can bend these any which way you want them. And a lot of this stuff is really nice faux greens. And I find that um, they're pretty easy to work with, but you do wanna make sure that you have a good variety of shades of green in here just to give it a little bit of depth. The next thing you're gonna need are florals. I found all of my florals as well as the greens at either Michael's or Hobby Lobby. And let me just say that faux florals have come a long way. So do not be afraid to use them. Now, are there some there that are not real looking? Absolutely. I had to take my time. I had to look. I made a lot of trips back and forth, kind of pulling this all together but I just love the colors that I chose. I mean, look at that rose. Isn't that gorgeous? It looks real. I mean, it's just so pretty. Let's see, I have a ranunculus. This is kind of in the soft kind of corally pink. I have an apple blossom branch in here and just a couple other branches. I think I have a hydrangea in here, but I just, 
loved this color as I was pulling this together. This is what I came up with and I just love it. Well, let's briefly talk about where we're going to be putting this after it's all done. So if you were making one of these and you were going to be placing it, say, a little higher than eye level, because you're going to put it over a dinner table, perhaps, or, you know, at a party, or maybe you're getting ready for your daughter's wedding, or whatever the case may be, if it's going to have something underneath it, you will probably want to pay attention to not only the sides here, but on top, because you're going to be able to see on top of this and you probably wouldn't pay as much attention to what is underneath this because people aren't probably going to reach all the way in and look up. You'll want to put something in there, but you're not going to have to pack it full. In my case, this is going to be hanging about 12 or 13 feet in the air and people will actually be walking underneath this. So you're not even going to see the top. You're definitely going to see the sides and you're definitely going to see underneath here. So my focus is going to be the sides and underneath. Now we're going to get started with the greens first. And what I like to do is cut all the tags off so mine are ready to go. I have all of my greens kind of grouped together and you're going to start with one green and you're going to space that green out across the entire thing and then you're gonna put it in, and then you'd go on to the second green. So for example, I am going to just take this, and I think I would kind of like maybe just to put one of these right on the inside here of each of these wires, kind of hanging over, making sure that I'm putting something on the back side as well, because we can't forget about, whoop, back. And you're just gonna kind of place these out. And then once you know that that's where you want them, then you're going to get your green, you're going to cut it, because we are not gonna need all this. So I am going to stick this into my cutters, going to cut it, oops, gonna fall. <laughs> and then I can take this and I'm going to weave this in to my chicken wire and let's get a close-up of that. So let me show you what I do to secure these here. I simply weave the stem up and over the chicken wire. So I'm just going to come, you know, under and go over, under, over. As long as this little stem is here, I put it in to the distance that I want so it hangs over and it's really as simple as that. There's really no need to zip tie these in because these really secure them. And as this gets more full, it becomes even tauter, and these things really are held in quite well. Next up are the ferns, and these are really, really pretty. They look very, very real, and they actually feel like they might be a live fern. I have 10 of these, and I am simply going to space this out on one side just to get an idea of where I'm going to put it. I know that I will simply repeat that spacing on the other side and then I'll come in, we'll cut the stems and then we will start assembling the ferns. Now, what I wanna say is when I look at the sides of my arrangement, I am gonna need something for the sides. And these ferns are so nice that I'm gonna put one on each corner because I can splay them out a little bit. So they'll kind of cover a little bit in front as well as the side. All right, you can see I have these laid out. They're not secured or anything yet, but do you see what a short corner I have here and how if I lay this fern on each corner, it almost covers the entire edge of this. But then as I come around to the front, it also covers the front side. Next up, we're gonna put the eucalyptus on. Now you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm taking one variety of green, I'm spacing it out, and then I'm putting it on my trellis here. I'm not going to be using all of the eucalyptus on the top. I'm gonna to start using some on the bottom because these are great pieces 
to kind of zip tie to the trellis underneath here to try to start filling in some of that from underneath. When I have this variety on, I will go and grab the next variety of greens and put those on and so on and so on. So let me show you how we attach this one underneath. All right, so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. I have my trellis. I'm gonna put my piece of eucalyptus. I'm gonna lay it this way across this trellis because I'm gonna start hiding some of this with these fuller greens. And I have a zip tie. I'm just gonna zip tie right around this green and the trellis. I can get it started. Oh, there, there we go. And I'm just gonna zip tie that on. And if you need to put more than one on here, you certainly can. But there, you can kind of see now how that is already starting to hide this piece of wood down the middle of my trellis. So you can kind of see how this is starting to fill in slowly but surely. I'm sure when I had like the first four on, you were like, oh boy, this is gonna be rough looking. Oh. I am gonna work on just kind of continuing this variety by variety, layer by layer. All right, all of the greens are on here. I'm gonna give you a close up and then we're gonna start with all the florals. So I have all the greens placed out and I mean, you'll still be able to see some spacing in here, like here, but I still have all of the florals, which also have greens on them to still put on. Let me get down underneath here and I'll just kind of give you a look up at what we've got going on underneath there. So that is starting to fill in as well. This is the first floral I'm going to be putting on. It's a delicate little rose like it has a number of little rosettes on the end of the branches along with some greens. It has a great little kind of drop to it or flow to it. I have 11 of these. This is the floral that I have the most of, so I'm gonna put this one on first. It's kind of gonna be my base floral. The first thing I do is lay these all out all the way around this piece and then I come back and I'll actually put them on. All right, so I have all these pieces in here. They're just laying here. I'm gonna now come around and I'm gonna put everything in. I'm gonna start in the middle and I'm gonna work out and do the front, I'll do the sides, and then I will come around to the back. Now these are, they do have a nice drape to them. I'm gonna work them a little bit because I, I really want these to kind of hang down because remember, when we're thinking about this piece, really, we should be looking at it like this. This is where we should be looking at it. We wanna make sure that we have enough of the flowers down here in the side. We really don't need it up top very much. And you do wanna work this in to the existing greens. You wanna make sure they just have a nice bend to them. And then we'll go on to the next one. All right, all the little hanging rosettes here are on. Next up, I'm going to be putting on this sort of corally pink colored ranunculus. And this stem has one open flower and then it also has a bud on it and I am going to space these out. I have 12 of them and I'm going to space them out here on the front but I'm also going to put some of these underneath here because I want them just kind of like this one is peeking out. I don't want it to hang straight down. I want it to kind of have a little bit of an arc to it so it'll just kind of peek out just a little bit from all of these greens. Here's another tip for you. As the top of this really starts to get full, as we keep adding more and more stems, it does get a little bit harder to weave this through sometimes because the wire is not as pliable. 
So sometimes it's hard to grab these little stems, but never fear, the needle nose pliers is here because you can just simply go in and pull it back up and then finish weaving it through. Then you just come up and this is that branch, it's bent over. It doesn't matter if it's bent over another stem. You do wanna make sure you zip tie it to, I've zip tied it to this stem as well as a piece of the chicken wire. You can see it there and I'll cut that off and we're good to go. All right, next up are these hydrangeas, kind of a creamy white, and then they have both a pink and coral colors in them, and they tie in really nicely to the other florals that I have. And what I'm gonna do with these mainly is I am going to put these underneath and hang them down, uh, probably up even higher than that, because I'm gonna use these to hide a little bit more of the trellis. So you might not see these from here. You might get glimpses of them, but you're mostly gonna see these from underneath. So here's what I like to do when I'm working on the underside is, I like to take the stem after I've cut it and then bend it. And some of these are really easy to bend and some are not. Then I kind of get down underneath and look for a space. And that's where I'm gonna go with this. And I just stick it up and because it has a bend in it, it's going to hold it for me. And you can see, I don't know if you can see that, but it just adds a little something, fills in that space really nice. This is probably a better angle to see it. It's right there. So you can see how nice it just fills in that space. Here's where we're at so far. Looking underneath, you can see I do not have everything all at the same length, so things are a little shorter, things are a little longer to make it look natural, all the while we're trying to fill it in. I don't know how this looks on film, but I'm really starting to love the way that this is coming together. And we still have a few more flowers to put on. The next one that I'll be putting on is this gorgeous rose. And this thing, like the stem, the leaves, the flower, this is probably the most real looking one that I have. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Again, it's that creamy white with a little bit of kind of a blush, pink, corally color. And again, just works so well with uh, the other things I have on here. So I'm gonna get these on next. All right, the roses are in, aren't they gorgeous? Now I have one more stem to add. It's another, this one is a, is a, well, I'm not even sure what this might look like, but it's a, it has that dark kind of pinky corally color in there. So I'll be adding a few of those in. And then I am going to cut these apart separately and use both the little hydrangea as well as the big one and piece those in throughout the arrangement. And then I think we're gonna be done and we'll come back and take a look at it. So here it is all hooked up and you'll see it has this rope. I can't even tell you what kind of rope it is, but it's heavy duty. This is not super heavy, but my husband put a piece of like rubber up here so it doesn't like rub on the edges and then it is just hooked up to those eye hooks. And this is what it looks like from up top and you can see how close it is hanging to the beam here in the greenhouse. So that's why we really didn't have to pay a whole lot of attention to the very top. Then these turn.
turn out beautiful. I am so in love with the way these turned out and they were so much fun to do. My first hanging arrangements, the very first one took me a little bit longer just because it was my very first one and I wasn't sure just how much I needed insofar as greens and florals. But once I got the hang of it, the second one went much faster and I love the way they turned out. I am going to use this in my greenhouse for dinner parties. I can see one of my shade cloth gets in here, having these in here for my garden tour. I could see taking one of these and hanging it in a tree over a table for an intimate dinner party. I could see hanging these with uh, in my greenhouse when I have cocktails for my girlfriends, showers, weddings, so many uses for these and I absolutely love it. And I hope you guys love it as much as I loved making it. And if you did, I hope you consider subscribing to my channel and sharing my video. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.